Hi, I'm Vicky. I'm glad you're here. Today I'll be showing you a beginner friendly loose florals watercolour using Zig Real Brush Clean Colour Markers. I'm using some Canson watercolour paper and the Set A30 markers from Kuratake. This is one of the cards and I haven't put any stamping in it. I think it's just such a beautiful card. It doesn't really need anything more. You could put a greeting inside if you had some stamps, but otherwise all you really need is your real brush markers and a water brush and some watercolor paper. So this watercolor paper is A5 size. I'm going to be using a rough watercolor paper or you could use the cold press watercolour. But I really like this rough texture. I think it might show up there. You might be able to see that. So I'm going to make six cards. I'm going to use the same technique for all of them, but make six very different cards. So when I get my markers, I actually store them upside down because if you store them right side up, you can't see what colours they are. I haven't had any problems with them um, bleeding or leaking or anything like that. But they're a really nice set. I do like the colours in this set. So I just keep them sitting upright on my desk. And I've taken out the colours I'm going to be using for these six cards and put them in a bucket there. So to make these cards, I started off with these strips of paper, which I use for a lot of things with watercolour, where I pick out what I'm going to be using in terms of the colour scheme. And this helps get me sorted so that I'm using different colours on each card and that I'm using colours that I know will go well together. So on this first card, I used deep red grape, light red grape, sand and moss green. And I could see from this strip that they were going to all play well together. And they're the colors that I used on this card. And I'm going to show you how I made this, how I painted it using the markers and a water brush. The water brush is just a medium tip. So I'm just taking my A5 sheet and scoring it using my cutting tool at four and one eighth of an inch and that provides a nice fold. Now I filled my water brush with water and I'm going to start off with a blue flower now using smoky teal. And I'm starting by laying down three dots of color in an equilateral triangle. And I'm going to pull each of those spots out in another triangle to create a three petaled flower. So I'm pulling that out with the water brush and I'm not letting the petals touch each other. So with loose water colouring, if you had all the petals touching, it would just look like a blob shape. You really want to keep it looking like a nice five petal shape. So I'm going to add some more smoky teal, two more dots where I think there's a space and make two more triangles. Pulling them out with the water brush. Now I'm not squeezing the water brush. The bristles are wet and this makes water control so simple. I think when you're starting out with watercolour, water control using a brush can be quite difficult. So using a water brush and markers just makes this so much easier. I'm just pulling out a little bit more colour there, adding a little bit more. And you can see how I'm not allowing those petals to touch. Cleaning off the brush on a paper towel. Now I'm coming in with this paler colour, which is aquamarine blue, and I'm just adding it to the edges of the petals, just directly to the petals, bringing in a little bit of that water brush just to blend them very slightly. And you can see how this flower now is deepening in colour and it has a bit of colour variation in each of the petals. So this is the basis of how to build these flowers. Now I'm going to bring in the smoky yellow 
and I'm dabbing that in the center of the flower and I'm letting it touch each of the petals so that the color will bleed. I'm just leaving it to sit there for a moment. I'm not going to use the moss green yet. I'm going to save that for the stems. But you can see how that's how I created those pink flowers. And I think I'm going to add another flower down the bottom using smoky teal and three dots again. I'm dabbing at those dots to add a little bit more pigment on. Again, a small equilateral triangle. Take your water brush and pull that pigment out to form another triangle with equal sides. One to the left, one to the top, and one to the bottom right-hand corner there. There's your three-petaled flower. And there where you, excuse me, when you see a space, you can add two more dots to make two more petals. So I'll put a dot there and a dot close to it. And I'm going to make sure those petals don't actually touch each other if possible. So there's your five-petal flower shape. And all of the cards have this same type of technique, but each of these six cards is very different. Not just the colors. Here I'm bringing in the aquamarine blue again. But the way I've put them together, the way I've added the stems, some of them have stems that are separate. Some of the stems are joined to each of the flowers. Some have leaves, some don't. Some flowers are large, some are small. Here's a smoky yellow and I'm dabbing that into the center and letting it bleed into those petals. Now I'm thinking I might put some buds in. So you can do buds in two ways. You can draw a curvy shape and draw it out with your water brush, or you can do the same technique you've done with the other petals, which is to just drop a dot of color down and then draw that out as well. And again, the same technique, I'm not allowing the buds to touch each other, otherwise it would just turn into a blob. Bringing in some of that aquamarine blue. And now I'm going to add some more little buds. This time I'm using the dot technique, two buds, two dots for the buds of each leaf and I'm curving one of them a little bit. And these are not um, triangle shapes, they're more long shapes. Now I've got four shapes there. I'm going to use the rule of odd numbers to make this a pleasing composition. So I'm creating another little bud down the bottom here. Bringing in aquamarine blue, just to add a variance of shading. But each time I bring that marker in, I'm going to soften it with my water brush. Now I might leave it to dry, or you could bring in a heat tool. But there's not a lot of water on these cards. It's not like watercolor where there's so much water on it, you have to wait for ages for the layers to dry. This is drying pretty fast. So this is a gorgeous moss green and I'm going to draw the bud shapes on the edge of each bud. And I'm going to do the stems in a similar fashion to this first card. I'm going to do individual stems and some of them will be curving to the left, some will be curving to the right. And I'm just using the moss green marker without any water and I'm keeping a very light touch so that the stems aren't too thick. Now I'll turn my paper here so that I can get a nice sweep of stem going in the other direction, curving off to the bottom there. Now you can see this is taking shape. This large flower, I'm just putting a simple stem on and the buds are going to be with independent stems of their own and anywhere where you've missed a spot, you can just go back and gently coax that marker towards the line. Keep a very light touch.
So that was a really fast card to put together and it's very similar to the first pink card. Now this flower I'm going to be using some more dramatic colours and exactly the same technique, three dots for an equilateral triangle, pull out the dots to make three more triangles for your three petals, add two more dots where there's a space and add two more petals for a five petal flower. So this colour is dark yellow. And I'm not squeezing the water in the barrel of the brush. I'm just applying the wet bristles to the paper. Here I'm adding a little bit more colour because this is quite a pale colour and I want it to show up and be a bit more vibrant. So you can always add more pigment, more layers. Now I'm bringing in the smoky yellow and just putting some lines here and there. I'm putting some wavy lines at the edge of the petals and I'm just going to soften that with the damp bristles on the brush. This colour here is deep vermilion. It's a gorgeous colour and I'm going to just drop that in the centre of the flower and let the colour bleed out into the yellow petals. And that gives a really dramatic look. Now I'm going to bring back dark yellow, putting some pigment down. I want to steer clear of the left hand side there because I don't want the flower to go too close towards the fold. But same technique again, three dots. So you can see how simple this is. And once you've done a couple of these flowers, it gets easier. The main thing to remember is try not to have the petals touching, otherwise it'll turn into a blob and it will look indistinct and it won't really look like a flower, it'll just look blobby. But that's really the only trick to making these work is to keep the petals separate. And if there's a bit of a space, you can make your petals broader. And now here's the smoky yellow. And I'm just drawing in lines here and there but these will all be softened with the water brush. So there won't be any hard edges. Now I'm bringing in the dark yellow, adding some more color so that I get a deeper color flower. And bringing in the deep vermilion. You can see on my paper towel there, there's very little pigment that is lost in this technique. Most of the pigment ends up on the page. Now I'm doing a bud, two dots, and I'm sort of curving this up in a longer shape rather than the triangle shape. Adding in some of that smoky yellow, blending it with the water brush and these two bud shapes are not touching each other. So here's another spot for a bud and another spot up above it. So I'm doing two buds on the left here. I'm just pulling up that dot of pigment with my brush. I'm not squeezing the brush, just using the damp bristles. Deepening the colour. I'm letting that dry for a little minute. Bring in the heat tool, dry it off. Now I'm bringing in the deep vermilion in the centre of those two bud petals, just a tiny little strip of it so that it will match the flowers. So it will read like the flowers that it has this red centre that's about to burst out. And now I'm bringing in moss green and adding the little bud shape. So the bud shape is just a little V shape with a round dot on the end. Bringing in the stems. And with the stems and the leaves, I'm not using any water, I'm just using pure marker. And I'm touching the page in as light a fashion as I can. Otherwise you'll find the stems might get a little bit too thick. And I'm just crossing them over each other in different directions there. Adding some leaves. 
I'll put another leaf on this side. And the leaf is just really quite, um, just a small oval, really. Okay, now the next card, this time I'm using Plum Mist, Plum Grey, Smoky Yellow and Moss Green. So I'm starting out with Plum Grey with the three dots. And this time I'm going to be making smaller flowers. So I'm not making them as large. And this time I'm making a little bouquet of five flowers. So I'm not going to have any buds in this one. I'm just having small flowers. Bringing in that smoky yellow. And letting it bleed into the plum gray. Bringing in the plum mist adding in some color variation, just touching it with the water brush. Three tiny dots this time and tiny petals. And then two more tiny dots and two more tiny petals. All in all, there will be five complete little flowers on this one. So I'm planning on making a set of these. Um, and the set of six cards will be a lovely gift for somebody. I can make a nice box to put them in. And I think they're just a fun way to use up some of the watercolour paper that I have been accumulating. And I love making cards. I think cards are really a versatile thing to have. I'm not using any greetings on any of these. If I wanted to, I could stamp a greeting later on. I could put happy birthday or thank you or thinking of you or something like that. But I think I'm actually going to leave them blank inside. If I'm giving them as a gift, then that person can use them for any occasion. So here's a spot for another little bloom. And these are probably about half the size of the other flowers that I've made because I want to fit all five onto the front cover. Pulling out the colour into another triangle shape, not allowing the petals to touch if possible, but allowing that lovely colour in the centre to bleed into the purple. One more down the bottom here. The reason that these flowers are so simple is that the water is controlled by the water brush. One of the things that can be quite frustrating when you're first learning watercolour is water control and the amount of pigment that you put down. And using this technique makes it so simple. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. Now letting that dry off a little bit. And now for the stems. I'm actually going to create one branch which is connected to each of these blooms. So they're all connected down the one stem. And I'm just thickening up where each stem meets the main stem, which is what you would see in nature. So you need to thicken up where they connect to that main stem. And that makes your branch look more realistic. All right, so that is pretty much almost done. What I've decided to do here is add another layer of water. And what this will do will provide hard edges, which I quite like for this technique. So the pigment is going to spread out into those areas that I'm wetting with the water brush and give some extra lines. So just laying down the water, adding the pigment into the water, just dropping it in, and the pigment will push out towards the end of the water and form little lines on these flowers which looks really interesting and adds some more texture.
There's still plenty of water in my water brush because I'm using such a small amount of it. I'm just dropping that pigment in and letting it spread out and this creates lines. I'm just deepening up the yellow centres because that has gone a bit paler. But you can see the variation that I can get just by doing simple techniques like adding water or changing the colour scheme. Now this particular one, let's have a look at this one. This is going to be quite dramatic. This is using Deep Vermilion, Shadow Pink, Smoky Yellow and Moss Green. So this is going to be quite a vibrant card, this one. And in go petals four and five. And this is quite a large size flower. So if you've been wanting to try loose florals or you have already tried loose florals and are finding you're getting frustrated with not being able to do them very easily, this technique is very beginner friendly. It's also very forgiving. So I've put wiggly lines at the edge of each petal this time, which is a slightly different look. So the deeper colour is at the outside edge. Then bringing in that lovely shadow pink, it's a really soft colour. And smoky yellow, letting this bleed into the pink. And I'm even going to add a little bit more water to help that move along. And this will really blend and bleed into those pink petals. And this gives a really pretty effect. Now I'm using the Deep Vermilion again. And I'm going to create another large flower up here. And I'm bringing in two more dots for two more petals. So we have another five petal flower. I'm really enjoying using the Zig Clean Colour Real Brush Markers. They're great for things like no line water colouring. They're great to use with stamps. They are really quite different from regular watercolour markers. They have a nylon brush tip on the end of them and the colour seems to move a lot better than it does with regular watercolour markers. It's, it's a lot more liquid than a marker. You can see when I lay down those three dots that there's quite a lot of pigment comes out. Now here I'm bringing in that yellow and letting it really bleed into the pink petals. And you can see the petals are almost two colours now. They're pink on the edges of them and then towards the centre they're becoming more a yellow colour. Here's a bud with those curved edges. And bringing in that lovely deep vermilion. And putting some on the outer tips as well. And not allowing the two bud pieces to touch so that there's a break between them. Now there's yellow in the middle of the flowers so I want to put this in the middle of the bud and adding some more water so that will really bleed into the blood into the bud shape. Just drying it off and now I am adding moss green to form a little shape for the bud to be sitting on. And I've only used one bud and two full flowers on this card. And I'm drawing all the stems to connect with each other. So it's one stem with one bud and two flowers on it. Deepening up that yellow. 
And what I'm doing here is I'm actually blending in some of the green from the stem to make a greenish yellow. And really bringing in some deeper color from the green of the stems. Now I'm going to dot around the outside of this, stipple around the outside, I guess you'd say, just to soften it. And I think this was actually one of my favorite of all the cards. It just had so much variance of color, so much blending, it was really pretty. So that was Deep Vermilion Shadow Pink, Smoky Yellow and Moss Green. Okay, now the next one I'm bringing in has the colors sand, mocha brown, and dark agate and moss green. So this is a really dramatic color scheme for this one. You can see there's still quite a bit of water left in my water brush. I've hardly used any water at all. And you can see how clean that paper towel is. I'm not constantly trying to clean up the color on the brush because I'm just using a very small amount of water each time. So I'm starting with sand, putting down three dots. And this time I'm going to be making a daisy shaped flower. Instead of the sort of fat petals, I'm going to be using long petals and they're going to have a little bit of a curve to them. So it looks a bit like a starfish at the moment. That's the beginning of the shape, but I'm going to add more petals. And I'm just going to pull out the color and make very long shaped petals with my water brush. So these are going to look more like daisies than five petal flowers. They're going to have more than five petals too. You can see how you can change the kind of flower using the same techniques, but just making the petals a different shape. Now I'm bringing in this lovely dark agate. It is so dramatic. And I'm just dotting it around and letting that color bleed out into the petals. And now I have mocha brown and I'm pulling out the color from the center using my mocha brown marker. It looks quite spidery, like a spider daisy. Now the sand dots create the basis. Keep adding more dots and long curvy petals this time. More sand, a little bit of the water brush. Now I'm bringing in the mocha brown and letting it bleed into those long petals and that lovely dark agate. It's almost like a Payne's gray. It's a really blue gray, it's gorgeous. And then drawing them out and I'm going to do another one here. I can see there's a good spot for it, but I'm only going to make it small. So I'm doing a small spidery shaped daisy. Bringing in the mocha brown and the dark agate. And then going back to my mocha brown to bring out the shape and draw it out. This one at the top is going to be much smaller again. And I'm just using the same technique, the same colors. I find it really helps if you keep putting your markers back in the same spot on the paper towel. If you put them in the wrong spot like I did there, <laughs> you might actually bring in the wrong color. So I had to just wipe that off and redo it. But it's an easy fix. So I'm working on these two at the same time while they're still both damp. And I'm just doing exactly the same technique that I did with the three other flowers.
Now I'm just using some of that dark agate to give them really deep centers, drying it off. And time for the stems. I'm using a really light touch. And each of them will have different stems curving in different directions, some to the left, some to the right. And I wanted to add some leaves. So I'm just adding some curved leaves onto various parts of the stems. And then I want the ends of those leaves to have a nice point. So I'm going to come back in and give them a really fine point on the end of each leaf, just so that each leaf comes to a point to match the spidery flowers. Just adding some finishing touches. I did find that the colours were a little bit too pale. So I added another layer of the sand and drew it out with the water brush. So that the flowers were nice and deeply coloured like the stems were. And it's just a minor adjustment to make at the end. Just as I was finishing off this card, I thought, yes, I like to deepen those colours. And it did make a big difference. So it's still a little bit damp. But the colours worked really well together. And you can see how the five strips that I made helped me decide what colours would work and which colours would play well together. So there's the pink flower. Then here's the yellow flower with the lovely red centres and some leaves. This is one of my favourites because of the way the yellow centres actually bled out into the petals themselves. I thought that was nice. This is a lovely one, the blue one. Here's the little posy of five flowers all joined together from the one stem. They were much smaller flowers than the others. Here's the daisy flowers. And here they all are finished and how they look together. And you can see these would make a great gift for somebody as a boxed set of greeting cards. Thank you so much for being here with me today and I hope you give this a try. The Zig markers are really fun to work with. They're very heavily pigmented. I just love them. Here are some close-ups and I'll see you again next time. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe for more watercolour card making tutorials.